How's it going YouTube? In this episode of Darius's Garage, we're going to be taking a deep dive inside BMW N54 and N63 piezo style direct fuel injectors. If that interests you, stay tuned. So I'm making this video primarily because I've done so many injector swaps now on N54s. Um, swapping primarily from index 7s, index 8s to the later index 12s. Uh, if you're not aware, BMW had 12 revisions of the N54 slash N63 fuel injectors. Um, the earlier ones, starting from 1 to 10, are commonly known to be unreliable, and the later index 11s and 12s are considered to be vastly more reliable. Now, it kind of got me thinking, why is it that the N54, index 8s, index 7s, all those injectors keep failing. What is it with them that makes them so unreliable uh, versus the later index 12s, which tend to be bulletproof? Uh, my observations from the index 12s, the engines run way better. Uh, they code way more consistently with the numbers that are uh, for the input coding. People online say that the N54, index 12 injectors are better because they're filtered inside, but I found actually that there are cases where the some injectors are filtered and they still fail. So it can't just be a filtration thing. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, nobody can really service these. They're not able to be taken apart. Uh, the only way that you can really recondition them is to try and clean them out and fingers crossed they work. And that's not really great but uh, that basically means that no one's really cut these open no one knows how they look and so I'm making this video to see what's really inside and and you know look at why is it that N54 injectors fail what's what's the real reason for it what's the problem with them so typically your signs with the N54 injectors failing uh, and any fuel injector really is uh, at cold start you will notice that the engine runs extremely rough it misfires it uh, will probably throw you a check engine code, uh, particular cylinder, you've changed your spark plugs, you changed your coils, everything is good uh, once the car warms up. But every time you start it when it's cold, you have an issue where the car misfires. Sometimes you might get a little bit of white smoke, something like that. Uh, another common thing that I've personally dealt with is a lean condition code. Uh, you'll get lean condition, maybe one bank, maybe both banks. Uh, you'll notice that your multiplicative uh, mixture is really high, uh, about 25-30%, uh, particularly at idle. And another thing is, you just might have a dead miss altogether, just a cylinder that doesn't fire at all. Electrically, it's failed, and it's not really spraying any fuel. It's not being triggered by the electric pulse um, that is uh, being sent by the DME. Cylinder 3. So that's kind of how they fail. Uh, that would be your telltale sign that they're no longer working properly. The, the only thing that you can really do at that point is essentially just change the injector um, with the uh, proper seals and coat it in and then your issue goes away. What do we have here? First of all, uh, we have two index seven injectors, this one and this one. Notice that the bodies are slightly different. You have a slightly different tip at the end here, uh, and you have a different uh, mounting tab bracket to uh, hold it in the head. Uh, here we have an index 12 injector, so you'll notice that this index 7 and this index 12, uh, they have a very similar body shape. Uh, there's not really too much difference here uh, that you can see from the outside, and then over here, we have three index seven injectors that are all cut open, uh, two of which are the more common body style, uh, just like the 12 and this seven. And then we have one that is shaved over here, uh, and that is this style of fuel injector. In order to tell what revision of injector you have, it's pretty simple. Uh, you look at, so you ignore all of these numbers here, all of this stuff. The only thing that really counts is the final digit right there, or the final two digits. In this case, we have an 07 that tells us that this is an index 7 injector. Here is your um, adjustment value that you input when you're coding the injector. So now let's talk about why these piezo style direct fuel injectors are different than regular port mounted fuel injectors that you would find in older 
uh, cars from like, let's say 1990 to like 2005, 2006, uh, some cases still being used to this day, uh, depending on the application. Um, but why these piezo direct injectors are different is because obviously they run direct into the combustion chamber. So they need to be able to run really high pressures. Your regular port injector does not run that kind of pressure. These things can run at up to, I think, 2,900 PSI uh, versus a regular port injector, which is basically whatever your low pressure fuel pump outputs. So like 30 to 80 PSI. Uh, so a much smaller figure. The reason why the pressure is so high is because fuel needs to atomize to burn. In a direct injection scenario, the pressures needed to atomize are much higher uh, because the injector is doing all the work. Versus a port injection scenario, uh, you don't have that disadvantage. Uh, the valves and the head design uh, mixes it all for you. At the time that these piezo style uh, direct injectors were being developed, so say around 2006 to 2010, um, the technology had to be piezo because the later technology which came out, uh, the coil style in the N55, it just wasn't able to keep up. It wasn't fast enough. It wasn't able to do what the engineers really wanted with it. Uh, and so piezo at the time was the only technology that could do that. It caused a lot of issues. It caused a lot of problems. And later on, coil technology caught up and uh, the same effect could be achieved that these injectors were doing, but with a much cheaper coil style technology. Coil technology is what was always used for injectors. Any electronic fuel injector that's a port injector, they use this style of injector, which is a coil style. This is a far more uh, costly alternative to this. In effect, a fuel injector, the way it works is you got two systems kind of going on. So you've got the pooling and releasing of fuel. So that is is basically spread across the entire injector, which starts at the port here, and it makes its way down, down the sides around the piezo element, and then it fills this little chamber here, and then it is released. So you can see how the sides here, there's a little channel at the sides for the fuel to run down the injector. And then there is a little port there, and the fuel can basically fill this area. And then after that, it is basically sent to this little hole down this channel and out the tip of the injector. So that's how the fuel system works in the injector. So here actually we can see exactly what this fuel uh, filter in the right injector is filtering. Uh, there is a feed from the rest of the injector that comes down and right here it uh, feeds into there and so BMW wants to filter out the fuel that's being introduced into the rest of the chamber. So that would suggest that fuel flows into the injector tip through here and then it must go through the center of this filter and then out through here and then it can finally enter this chamber. Uh, that's how this injector works. This injector works a little differently. It doesn't have a filter there. Plunger runs all the way from the piezo element at the this area here all the way to the end. The way that the fuel flows is the plunger opens and when the plunger is open like such, fuel can be evacuated out of this and um, it has this angle on purpose to create this sort of cone effect. And then there is the rest of the injector, which is responsible for firing this and controlling this little plunger at the end and controlling when the fuel is uh, ejected out of the injector. So that's what this is here, the piezo element of the injector. So this is a crystal that runs along from here to here. Uh, you can see parts of the core on this section here. Um, it has a very similar texture to here. Obviously, we can't see it because it got butchered uh, when, when cutting this open. But uh, you can see that over here we have a little bit of this ceramic looking stuff. Here we also have that and here. So all of this section is the piezo element. And this, when electric charge is applied to it, it expands a bit 
and it forces the plunger to basically move down and then when the electricity is removed this contracts and then the spring closes this this valve The more it opens, the lesser the angle is going to be, the tighter it is, the narrower it is. Uh, and the uh, tighter that this is open, so the less that this opens, but still remains open, not like this, um, the more widespread the cone is going to be. And uh, BMW wants a particular range so that the cone does not spray onto the uh, spark plug itself and foul it. Um, so they're trying to control very precisely how much this opens uh, in order to uh, achieve proper combustion. We also have on the top here, this is known as the thermal uh, compensator. So it accounts for changes in temperatures of the injector itself uh, to maintain consistency in the operation of this expansion and contraction. Um, and on the very top, we have... Um, I think the final stage of assembly, this is a cap that uh, prevents anything from really getting into the injector. Um, this has no real active function other than just sealing the injector from the elements. The reason why an injector would leak pretty clearly at this point, we can see that if this plunger doesn't close fully or if there is an issue with the sealing between the plunger and the body of the injector, then we won't have a seal. Uh, what would cause this to not really close? Well, obviously, if the uh, surface between the two, like a regular valve in an engine in your head, uh, if the surface is dirty or if it's marred up and no longer can make proper contact with one another and it's rough, uh, then you will have a leakage between the body and the plunger. So obviously if dirt gets through there, uh, that would definitely cause this to be an issue. Um, you, would, you would basically score the sealing surface and then it's no longer flat and then you don't have a seal. Another issue that you could have is that just the, uh, not even dirt getting in, but just the metal over time wears away. So depending on what metal they used uh, and you know what casting or forging process they used, um, this metal will wear away over the uh, use cycles and it will no longer be able to seal and it'll leak. I'm not stretching the truth too much here in saying that the index 12s versus index 7s use a different metal alloy or forging process to finish them off. Um, there is actually some evidence to suggest that there is a different metal used between the 7s and the 12s. Um, you can notice that there's actually slightly different discoloration around these welds. Uh, versus here, there isn't really any of that sort of stuff going on. Um, the metal on camera appears a little bit more dark. This one appears a little bit lighter. Um, so a different metal formula or compound is used uh, for the casing of the Index 12. Um, also having a larger sealing surface, maybe in the later injectors in the Index 12s, uh, that would definitely uh, help with sealing properly. If you have a really small surface, any little imperfection in that surface will cause it to leak. But if you have a much larger surface, uh, you have a lot more area for it to seal, uh, even if you do get some scoring and whatnot. So I think that could be definitely a difference between the uh, earlier injectors and the later injectors. Um, also, you have a spring here. If the spring can no longer uh, push the injector uh, plunger back in, then you're not going to have a fully closed uh, unit and therefore it's going to give you um, issues with leaking. Another difference that we may find in the index 7s versus the index 12s is a different compound uh, used for the piezo element. Um, this would explain why the index 12s program a lot easier and more um, consistent with their numbers. Uh, versus the index sevens, which are kind of all over the place. Uh, you have massive differences in um, numbers.
between what you input and what the computer uh, and the ECM actually registers as the uh, adjustment value for that injector. Um, the index 12 is much more consistent. So I would be very confident in saying, again, no proof of this, but I would be very confident in saying that the compound used for the index 7 piezo element and the compound used for the index 12 piezo element is not going to be the same. And I think that this may even have an effect on why the older injectors leak and why the new ones don't. And the reason I say that is perhaps there is a um, an issue where the older piezo element, when it expands and contracts, eventually it forgets its shape and it can stay in an expanded form even though electricity is no longer being applied to it. And that would push this plunger down and cause you a leak. So again, no matter how much filtration you have going on there, um, that's not going to help the fact that the piezo element is not the right size anymore. And it's, it's basically causing you a leak. Um, that would also explain why lean condition occurs. So your injector, even though charge is being applied to the piezo element, it's not opening up enough and it's causing you issues with um, not getting enough fuel delivered. Index 12s, they're a lot more robust, reliable piezo elements, and therefore they don't fail as often. If you made it this far in this really long, nerdy, technical video on N54 injectors, I personally would like to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. I know that I did, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.